The Amped EV Podcast is sponsored by Autel Energy. Visit autelenergy.com for more information. Hello and welcome back to the Amped EV Podcast. My name is David Sickles. I am the editor for The Buzz and we have a really special one for you here today because my co-host Jason Morgan, he is the content director for Fleet Equipment. He is actually right now, as we speak, behind the wheel of a Volvo VNR electric truck. Let's hitch a ride and see what it's like. Hey David, great to talk with you. So I am behind the wheel of a Volvo VNR electric we are at the volvo customer center i have andy brown product marketing manager electromobility volvo trucks north america here to answer any and all <laughs> questions on your virtual drive we're glad you could join us in the cab here yeah this is great this is this is a lot of fun i don't even i mean i don't even have to really leave my pajamas if i don't want to i can just get up get in the chair and ask you questions so this is fantastic yeah this is the video conference world we live in now <laughs> Absolutely. So, Andy, I wanted to start out uh, asking you just some of the uh, some of the configurations, the specs of this truck. What's the battery configuration? What's the expected range? Are there any um, applications that you're specifically targeting here? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, Volvo trucks. We've we've been in electromobility since we entered the market in North America since 2020 after the lights program. So. I am really proud and happy to report that we have five different configurations, which gives us you know, a really cool statement to say the largest electromobility class eight truck portfolio that's in production. And just to elaborate a little bit, it's a four by two, a six by two, and a six by four tractor, and a four by two and a six by four uh, rigid truck configuration. So that's hmm. five total. And within your six by four rigid and your six by two and six by four tractors, we have the option of a four battery pack and the six battery pack. Hmm. Oh, what sorts of applications would those uh, different configurations be targeting? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the applications where the VNR electric really shines is that uh, local pickup and delivery, the regional haul applications. So types of segments like food and beverage, uh, drayage, those types of applications is really where the VNR electric shines. And I'll, I'll elaborate on that a little bit more because the electric, right, is an electrified version of the VNR. And that's our regional haul tractor that's been around since 2017. And with its short hood, excellent maneuverability and controllability, it makes the perfect last mile type application truck, especially when you electrify it. Absolutely, and you've been running demo laps all day. I understand. You know, what's your what's your charger set up there? Have you had to charge the truck in between laps at all? Yeah, so uh, we've actually done two types of charging. Okay, so what we have on the track is two separate CCS one chargers at 180 kilowatts. Now our tractors can handle up to 250 kilowatts, but what we've done right is at the end of the day because we have four waves of customers coming through. At the end of the day, we just plug up the two tractors, leave them overnight, and in the morning, come in and unplug them and they're ready to go. Now, you know, if we had a big wave and we wanted to introduce more tractors, we actually take advantage of what's called opportunity charging. So we have a nice uh, lunch period for an hour, and if we wanted just to top off our tractors, we'll just plug them in, go eat lunch, come back down, and they'll be ready to go. Uh, Andy, real quick, David, I'm just going to jump in because I know you have the second generation of the VNR electric. Are we in the second generation? Is this a, is this a next gen or are we still on the first gen? In this so that's a good clarity. We have next generations out on the track, but what you are driving, Jason, is a first generation. Okay. But what I want to emphasize is that you're driving a customer truck. Right. So, you know, this is a true production vehicle getting put to use. In fact, this truck supplies parts to our new river valley plant that you can see across over there and when we talk about a full sustainable journey for volvo trucks right we have our parts delivered to our factory in a sustainable way so it's it's a good example of practicing what we preach right well and i drove the the new next generation i drove that one earlier and i didn't know like 
operationally, it's still the same cool experience. You know? Operationally, yeah. The the only difference is right is a better battery design. Mm -hmm. So it's the same battery footprint. We do offer up that six battery pack option, which didn't exist before, and then other these little standard features like Volvo dynamic steering, it comes standard with your phase two. Okay, and sorry Dave, one more thing and then I'll let you get back to it, but I just wanted to know, yeah. what, what are we loaded at here? Because we have a full trailer <laughs> here, what are we loaded at? Yeah, absolutely. So this tractor trailer combination is 79,000 pounds. Wow. Okay, so that's wow. 3,000 pounds <laughs> less than the 82 gross combination weight that we're allowed federally. Right. In fact, Jason, I want you to accelerate on this straightaway. Okay. Okay. And you tell me whether this feels loaded or not. Okay. Yeah, I can't even feel it, honestly. I mean, I'm not a CDL driver. I've been in a number of trucks, but you don't even feel it. One of the cool things, well, me, something you have to keep an eye on. It's almost like a sports car experience where <laughs> all of a sudden I'm 10 miles over what I expected to be at because the torque and power is uh, it's a lot of fun. Basically. Well, let me clarify that, right? I mean, it's 455 horsepower and 4,051 pound-feet of torque. <laughs> That's what you get with an electric motor. Yeah, that's awesome. And I hope uh, you probably didn't notice, but your truck is shifting mm -hmm. and it's a smooth acceleration from dead stop all the way to highway speeds thanks to that two speed I shift transmission. Right, very cool. Go, all right, David. Andy, what kind of uh, range can you expect to get with that kind of load in that vehicle? Yeah, so uh, with the six battery pack, right, we're looking at up to 275 miles of range. With your four battery pack, you could uh, predict up to 175 miles of range. Um, you know, it's one thing to say up to those numbers. Uh, I will clarify for the audience, right? The same environmental impacts that affect fuel economy will also impact your range. So if you're doing a lot of highway speeds, or if you have high elevations and steep grades and things of that sort, traffic even, right? Weather conditions, all of those environmental impacts uh, unfortunately, electric isn't uh, uh, resistant to those. So, you know, I just think that's an important education piece uh, when I start to clarify these types of ranges that customers can get. Right. One more, and I'm going to jump in here one more thing to clarify that because something that I learned too. So, for the, and correct me if I'm wrong, but for the next gen VNR electric, even with the four pack battery, you're getting more range because of the new thermal management system and other design features that you have in the next generation. So it's not as if the next generation is just more batteries, so here's more range. Yeah, yeah. You know, apples to apples, first generation to second generation, same battery size, you're getting more range out of the next generation. Good is point. So, so, so I'll piggyback that, you know, a little battery 101 for you, right? You can think of batteries as humans. They like that ambient temperature, that 74 degrees. Right. Well, these, these tractors have been put through the hot summers of California, the cold winters of New York, and one of those biggest, largest improvement items is that BTMS, or that battery thermal management system system, which is proactive heating and cooling to make sure that ambient temperature of those batteries really have a consistent performance that our customers absolutely need when they start to uh, implement these in their operations. Right, for sure. Jason, I have a question for you. You had mentioned that this almost feels more like a, like a sports car while you're driving it. What other differences are you experiencing when you're behind the wheel? Yeah, I think one of the biggest ones and something that we talked a lot about today as, as we've talked with the entire Volvo team is the regen braking. And I know we've talked about it before, David, uh, but in operation here, you really feel it's, it's very comparable to an engine brake on a diesel. The one cool thing is, though, you don't have the engine brake noise. And so there is none of that diesel engine brake noise. You get the same amount of stopping power or, or, or a, uh, it feels very similar. Uh, and Andy, if you want to walk us through, because yeah. we have a number of different regen options here on the on the stem. All right, David, this is really good timing of the questions. So I'm going to have Jason go ahead and put the put the accelerator down to the floor. Okay, Jason, you're going to accelerate. We're going to get some good speed here. All right. All right. Let me just straighten out so a just to just to give you the lay of the land, we're on a straightaway. We're about to hit a curve, a rather uh, steep curve, kind of like a U-turn here. And we're at a level three region, all right? So I'm gonna have- I keep, backed off, I got- going, I got going. backed <laughs> off, I got nervous. So as we start to approach this, I'm gonna tell Jason to let off the accelerator right now, okay? 
and that the, the engine brake's gonna kick in, okay? We're gonna yeah. take this curve nice and easy. There you go. All right, so. <laughs> we, if we were about 45 miles per hour <laughs> heading before you told me to take the foot off. Yeah. It dropped me down to about 30, a little under 30. I, I did use the service brake because I'm nervous. I'm a nervous <laughs> man. But that was the first time on these loops we've doing, the first time I've touched the service brake. Okay, there mm -hmm. you go. See, yeah. and, and, and that brings me up to the point of what the cool kids are calling one pedal driving, yep. right? Because of the regen and you effectively using your accelerator pedal, right? You can approach these curves judging your right distance and that just comes with uh, comfortability. That's right. Right? But when you don't have to press the service brakes all the time while well, you're eliminating and repetitive, repetitive mo uh, movement, right, yep. of uh, the driver, so repetition there, yep. so your driver fatigue, and your service brakes, it's a wear item. Yep. So when you factor in the TCO, or your total cost of ownership of this truck, those small factors play a big role when you look at the life cycle of these tractors. Right, and I think the number today for regen braking and typical operation was anywhere from five to 15% range back to the battery during operation. Right. Well that's said. What, that's what it's mm -hmm. driven. Wow, that's not bad at all. Andy, earlier you had mentioned to Jason that you would hit level three regenerative bra regenerative braking. Can you explain to a uh, you know a layman like me what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So we have four different modes of regen on this tractor. We have automatic mode, level one, two, and three. So automatic mode, the way I've been able to describe it is if you took someone from a diesel tractor, put them in a BEV, they would operate similar. So if you let your foot off the accelerator, Jason, right, you can yep. see it's coasting, yep, coasting like you would with a diesel. But yep. at least with automatic, you can capture some of that region back. Oh, I see. So it, it's on automatic, I'm coasting, but there's still some region. It's now, not just full on open. Now, as we approach this curve, yep. okay, yep. we'll just notch it down one. All right. You, you feel it yep. going slower? Yep. Notch it down too if we're starting to get nervous because I yep. see his foot going on the surface. <laughs> he doesn't there. need to I do, didn't it. do it. And then I did you can not do it. you can take this tur yep. curve right here. Perfect. So David, those one, two, and threes, those are the level of intensities of that region. And uh, like like Jason started to said, uh, you know, it's almost like that engine brake. Now, as a driver becomes more comfortable, right? Professional drivers become one with their tractors. There's different uh, scenarios when you would want to use your automatic versus your one, two, and three. If you're doing a lot of highway driving, automatic's gonna be fine because you don't wanna take your foot off that accelerator and lose that momentum for the sake of regen, right? You, you may need to take a break or just let your foot off the accelerator and not lose that momentum, right? Sure. Um, but if a car were to pull out in front of you or some kind of object or something like that, well, you can go all the way down to three, reduce your speed, and if absolutely necessary, tap into the service brakes as needed. Right. Hmm. I see. I see. I, I wanted to ask you about service as well. What are the, some of the big service differences on how you would service a truck like this versus one of your diesel alternatives? Yeah, so there's a couple ways to answer it. Um, you know big service differences there aren't that many right because you're talking about less components so in reality uh, service is actually less and uh, there's there's no uh, engine oil right that uh, you have to replace or anything of that sort these batteries uh, are made to be for the life cycle of your tractor so uh, I'll answer it this way that the typical service that a customer can expect is the same as their diesel in terms of those wear items like tires um, glass and, and, and those other high wear items, but we already talked about and went and elaborate on it, but your service brakes, you won't have to uh, touch those if driven appropriately for a long time. And, mm. and the other one was the engine oil and uh, filters and things of that sort because, well, there's no engine in this tractor. Absolutely. And of course, you've been talking with a lot of customers today. I guess this is a question for both of you. You know, what have you been hearing from these customers who have been driving this tractor? What's kind of been their takeaway? And Jason, I'll let you go first. <laughs> okay, I go first. Well, so one of my one of my takeaways, David. I mean, you know, we live and breathe this stuff every day. We talk about a lot of electric trucks. We hang out with the Volvo crew quite a bit. Um, but one of the great uh, things about today was there was still just a ton of new. Uh, info to talk about 
Uh, you would think that, man, we've covered everything about electric trucks uh, in the past year or two since Volvo had, had put it out, but there is still plenty to talk uh, talk about today. Uh, we have a story, sorry, I'm going to plug uh, Fleet Equipment because we have a story up on Fleet. We've got uh, a video that walks us through, Volvo Financial Services walked us through how to buy an electric truck, which mm -hmm. is great. I mean, a look behind the scenes of here's how you finance it. Here's the support you get. Here's what you should expect from partners. Uh, the charging uh, infrastructure, I know. <laughs> so during the charging infrastructure uh, conversation, I was uh, texting David with a bunch of ideas of Here's some follow-up stories we need to do because these are sure. cool topics that we were talking about. So there is still, as we, you know, as more trucks come into the market and electric trucks, uh, fleets aren't operating them, the questions keep coming and they, they keep evolving and always something to talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, so so I'll add to that, right? Um, what, what Jason is really referring to and the whole makeup of this whole agenda, right, is the ecosystem that is electromobility. And often, uh, oftentimes, people who don't live and breathe in this space, they see Volvo trucks and they see us as an OEM manufacturer. You just produce the VNR electric, and that's it, right? Mm. But it's not that. And one of our uh, main goals or missions of, of this, this customer summit, right, was to educate them, uh, but really show Volvo's 360 approach. We are, uh, I would say, you know, very proactive in every element of the adoption journey of electrification that any customer can find themselves in, whether it be the acquisition. So Jason mentioned VFS, right. whether uh, they're looking at creating their charging. What do I use public charging or do I need to invest in my own charging? Right. Well, guess what, right? We have the lights project that will give you a step-by-step -step guide of what worked well in lights. We have charging specialists, we have Volvo Energy, and then, of course, right, we, we have the VNR electric truck. And then last but not least is the prep work. I always say electromobility re rewards the prepared. And so with the digital services like electric performance generator, yep. EPG, right. these customers can plan their operations that reduces range anxiety, but also gives them the confidence to say, hey, electric i can make it work in my operations right. mm. and then the uh the last thing to answer your question so that's one theme the other theme is when you start to hear all these things you know i'm a marketing guy so i say smooth acceleration <laughs> from dead stop to highway speeds i say uh you know this has just as much power as your diesel well uh, i will tell you the overwhelming positive feedback from these customers when i tell them just what I did with Jason, put your accelerator down to the floor and I tell them how much weight they're pulling. I've had a couple of customers say, no way, roll <laughs> up the trailer, in which case I had to roll up the trailer and show them that they are in fact pulling 79,000 pounds. So that has all that has really been my punchline hmm. during this uh, co-piloting experience and it really seals the deal with our customers. Yeah, I mean, these these trucks are obviously new for a lot of fleets. Um, you know, when, when Jason and I talk with fleets, I think understandably there tends to be a lot of hesitancy wanting to jump into, you know, electrified trucking at all. Um, but it sounds like what you're saying is this kind of summit is, is really, um, you know, maybe changing some minds, opening up some um, opportunity with some of your fleet customers and really kind of settling some of that hesitancy. Would that be would that be safe to say? We hope so, and uh, you know, I I will say that's been uh, mission success. Uh, there's been conversations happening that have uh, matured uh, almost immediately, right? As uh, customers really start to say, "This was an idea for me. Now, how do I make it happen? And what's my tactical plan?" Right. Sure. Well, hey, thank you both for let, letting me ride along with you. This was a lot of fun for me, and I know I learned a lot. Um, yeah, just just thanks for inviting me out. This this has been great. No problem, Dad. I seriously, next time you're coming. I know it didn't, timing didn't work out this time, but we will get you in an electric truck one of these All right. days I'm in real you life, to not, not, not the virtual that. video. And I'll put you through the test just as much <laughs> as I did with Jason. That's right. Perfect. Yeah, we'll get a camera on you and see where your foot is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Play. I won't be scared. I'm putting down the accelerator. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I'm going to... Uh, 
I'm now gonna jump this curb and hit the highway and see how far we can take this. I'll, I'll capture Andy. Uh, right, David, well, great talking to you. I will see you back in the office. Perfect. Take care, guys. All right. Hey, what a great ride. Uh, I really learned a lot here. Um, you know, when we talk to fleets, fleets don't know much about these trucks. Understandably, they're they're new. Uh, we don't know a lot about them either. And having an opportunity to actually drive one of these trucks and ask questions uh, directly to the source, super helpful. Um, you know, like Andy was saying, uh, food and beverage, uh, drayage routes, um, and then like Jason was talking about, you know, how to actually buy an electric truck. Setting up this charging infrastructure, these are these are items that need to be addressed if this is the route you're going to go. So, um, you know, these kinds of, uh, you, you know, summits for fleets to actually have an opportunity to get in there, get behind the wheel themselves, just like Jason did, is super helpful. Thanks a lot for joining us today. We'll see you next time.